Autumn leaves thickly crunched our path yesterday, up behind the game lodge along the creek. For a few miles there was fall, with water running, and clear ponds fishless and millennial. Buffalo and bighorns mowing lodge grass in large numbers, while a hawk cried overhead, and a huge owl did not, while ghosting through thick trees along the creek, winding its way the winter. Autumn leaves hung purple along the trail, while roseate afternoon skies turned golden sunlight on the peaks and cliffs. Above us shimmered a feeling that we might be in the last of days like this, surely the last of leaves ghosting down. So many brightly varied showers, hue and cry underfoot calling to mind the leather stocking tails of silent traverse through just such. And now, we perch together before facing home on a large, log bare bark, silent on the ground beneath a perfectly arched sapling, announcing no fast food here. More screech overhead, and Becky says, there's something there moving over your shoulder on the hillside beyond, above the leafy tree next to the notch in the boulder there. A giraffe seeming head, floating eerily on the mossy background, ears cocked to hear again that voice located where? Bending our eyes to her silent traverse, uphill into full view with white elk butt, showing behind tan hide and arching neck, and then another blacker head of horns, and a black hide floating in her whole orbit, wary too as is the next red head of horn, three grazing, watching, and sniffing for us. Finally, gazes locked together there where each knows the other as animate beings, seldom seen in this place of evening songs. And they float up and behind the boulder, notched in our memories of this wan day, winding now into an evening light, <laughs> no moon to see here beyond full sunset rise by a few days' rotation. Turning home, we wind our looking way, sharper now, for beasts of prey on boulders, where we are consequently graced by two bighorns, carefully estimating our abilities to run a hundred yards straight uphill. Not too worried, and apparently not sensing lions on the rocks. Nonetheless, our former 90-minute pace turns to 60 in the darkening canyon, and no more beasts appear in the leaves as we depart hills on the way down. And out to plains through grazing deer, turkeys pecking lovingly at evening ground, appearing to relish leaves of fall. And it's very short. Okay. It's called My Savior. Battling through my life day after dreary day, barely surviving the fight just to find another on my way. Every lost battle cloud clouding my heart with an increasing opaque stain. Days linking into each other, shackling my mind with a burning chain. Grown weary from the continuous battle against mediocrity. Through the fog of war, it's you that I see. My armor and chains shattered all over the floor because I have no need for them anymore with your shining smile as my impregnable shield, and our love as the ultimate weapon, I will never yield. <laughs> and uh, this is for a girl back home in Chicago. It's called uh, No One Like You. You're so pretty, you're so sweet, you can drive a whole room wild with the click with the feet. You introduced me to the sublime, from then on, you were the corona to my line. <laughs> you can make me smile, make me laugh. Your plan is to conquer the world. Can I get half? <laughs> Remember at house parties, how we used to dance? People cannot resist but to get a glance. You remember watching the sunrise? I think the same day, we went out for cheese fries. 
Or that one time in Michigan, you were shrooming while I was puking. Too much vodka, that's all I have to say. I was with you, so it wasn't a bad day. How about the time we went to see a really bad movie? We wanted our money back, so we made up a story. You're the heat, fire of my summer. I never knew what I had to lose. God, I love you. Impulsive you were, unpredictable the same. You were a lioness that I could not tame. Then you went away, shouldn't have let you leave. I was too young, so naive. We still keep in touch, even though we are through. I've had a couple of loves, but no one like you. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do our first place poem from the High Plains Writers um, competition. This uh, year, uh, the poem comes to us from Marcella Raymond of Beersford, South Dakota, and came out always going to read it. It's called Prairie Dark. Prairie Dark. What draws us to the prairie is hard and sharp as the blade of a paring knife pulled through peach skin. The faint yellow of kitchen windows pools thins to gray between house, barn, gravel road. In darkness deep as a flower bin, deep as apron pockets deep. Somewhere in the black, a cat carries weak old kittens from a graping, gaping cellar split open to catting season, hides them in a tractor tire overgrown with lamb's quarters. Her ribs shift, glide, a delicate cage where hunger paces dark and beautiful as the shadow crossing inside the kitchen window. <laughs> 